Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to walk through the steps required to make this sort of map style in Illustrator to create textures and then ArcGIS Pro. So the defining characteristics of this style are, I mean, it's felt, right? It's supposed to look stitched. So the texture of felt, and the stitching and puckering, and then a slight drap shadow around the outside to make it look like it's elevated from the surface. So let's look at how to create an actual felt texture. Um, a grayscale texture with transparency so that I can apply a dynamic color behind it and it looks kind of felty still. So here's a photograph of a swatch of my daughter Willow's felt that I took and I am going to quickly uh, create a duplicate of it and uh, flip it twice so that when it, when it uh, repeats itself in a pattern you don't get a lot of edge effects there. It's just kind of a, a silly little hack that I do, but it, it works in this case. And then I'll, I'll group those two together and I'll create a black rectangle and then make the image itself a clipping mask of the black rectangle. So the highlights, or the, I mean the lowlights, um, are what shine through so you get kind of this dark texture and everything else is transparent. And then I'm going to do the same thing but for a white rectangle and I'll invert that clipping mask and that will isolate the highlights of the felt. And so what I end up with is a highlight and the low light of the felt and then when I kind of get rid of that background color you can see that I've just got a texture image and it means that I can change the background color and it still looks nice and felty. So I'll get rid of that test background color here and I'll just export the image texture itself as a PNG with transparency in it. And in ArcGIS Pro now, I've got this set of Beth or not bathymetric, but elevation polygons. And instead of a solid fill, I'll give it a picture fill. And I'll just point to that texture that I just made. And I named it text for some reason instead of felt, because I don't know why. And I'll hit apply. You can see, you know, if I turn it on and off, I've got this felt texture. All right, we're getting somewhere. I'm seeing the felt, and I'm seeing the blue behind the felt which is important. Now for this solid stroke outline, I'm just going to give it a dashed effect. And then I'll slightly randomize the dash effect just because people, when they stitch, don't stitch perfectly robotically. And this helps kind of give that illusion of, of hand stitching. And I'll duplicate that white um, stitch look with a semi-transparent black stroke of the same, the same pattern, but thicker and semi-transparent. Now I'm going to add another line, and I'm going to make this a gradient stroke, and I'll use the offset. I'll give it a negative offset to pull it in a little bit to give it a little bit of that that uh, puckered shading that would happen when the stitching tugs down at the felt a little bit, and you get a little bit of a depression in the fabric there right around that stitching. And I'll give it kind of a, a faint gradient to, uh, to full transparency around there. And right now you can kind of see in this rendering preview that okay it's kind of pushing down it's got a little bit of a shadow near the edge of that stitching now for the lip of the fabric where it ends I want to kind of show some highlighting where the light catches that part of the fabric that's maybe flipped up just a little bit and so it's really just the opposite of that shadow gradient it's a highlight gradient that goes from kind of a faint white to a fully transparent white when it touches the seam and then the effect, which you can't quite see here yet because I don't have a drop shadow in there yet, but is this kind of raised edge of the, of the felt. And now I'll duplicate my shadow and I'll reverse, reverse it and kind of give it a positive offset, reverse the gradient. So now I've got a drop shadow sort of effect here. And I'm going to add a wave effect and a move effect. So the wave just gives it kind of like a little sine wave wow, wow, amplitude. And so I'll, I'll give it a wide. And the reason I'm doing that is because it gives it a little kind of a, a dimpled, puckered feeling like uh, felt wood when you stitch it there. Um, and I'll move it. I'll offset it to the bottom and to the right just a little bit. And there you go. Now it looks like actually something that's plausibly a big stack of layers of felt that somebody's tediously stitched on there. <laughs> And what I'm doing now is I'm just locking all of the layers except for my color layer, and I'm saving it as a style. What that means is it's now fully reusable as a resource for me, 
and I can also dynamically color it um, because just that solid color rectangle is unlocked. So now when I go in and I say, you know, let's give it some thematic shading, I'm going to use the Viridis color scheme because it's awesome, and I'll say, boom, you know, here's here's the felt fill, and it'll render in as just my default felt, and I'll say, um, give it that color gradient, and then here it is. So now it's all those little previously blue rectangles are now dynamically colored according to that Viridis color scheme, which is cool. Now I've made a full style that you can download for ArcGIS Pro. It includes point features and line features and a bunch of uh, felty fills, and you can find it right here. I'll provide a link to this in the description to all of those styles and then this style specifically. And if you download it, you can add it to your ArcGIS Pro project via the catalog. So I, I right click the styles section and I just add the style that I downloaded and there they are. It's the points, the lines, the fills. Um, now let's see what it looks, how do you apply this in your own project. So I've opened up the symbology here and I'll go to format all symbols and I'll click on the dynamic color version and here are the bathymetric layers of the Great Lakes kind of stacking up. Wait a second, they're stacking up. That's backwards. They look like hills instead of depressions. That's okay. I'll just reverse the symbology there via that more menu. And now they paint in kind of in, an, in a depression appearance. Um, so I'll apply my Viridis color scheme here. And because it's, you know, you're using that dynamically colorable background fill, there they are. Um, now, instead of that yellow one, I'm going to change that to something a little bit more sandy and choose one of the predefined colors that I've got in this style. Looks a little bit more like land as a contrast to water. And I've added a natural earth rivers layer and a cities layer. So the rivers, I've, I can apply a felty piping to it. And for the cities, I'll choose a little felt circle and change its color to like plum. And there it is. And I, I shared the style, and people are doing all kinds of amazing things with it. Here's Esri's campus. Here's a national park in New Zealand with a little wooden frame graphic that I provided. Um, people are doing some really fun things with this. That's probably the best thing about my work here at Esri is making things and then seeing other people use the things that I've made. Esri UK did some cool stuff. Join Immersion did this really cool animation of a deer migration. Uh, and on and on, a lot, of, a lot of cool examples of people using the felt style. So enjoy. Hope you have fun with this and uh, keep sharing the stuff that you make. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and suggest maps that I've made that you'd like to see demos of. Thanks.